exactly something. But just to prove the point that if I click continue and I get my application to continue running, I can just scroll to the bottom again, type something in, and click save, and my bug is fixed. Right, cool. So what I wanted to demonstrate is that with IntelliTrace, you can get to the root cause of the bug quicker, even if you don't know the code. Mm -hmm. And I kind of went really quickly um, through the UI, actually making use of it to fix the bug. Um, what I want to show you now is the things that I didn't use. So just to review, what parts of what you just showed are new in 2015? Because IntelliTrace has been in there for a while. That's right. So IntelliTrace used to be a tool window that was in the same space as Solution okay. Explorer. It was just an yep. extra tab that you could click to. And it used to be this same list of events, only they were in a flat list format rather than a tabular format. Okay. So the list of events is the same, yep. only the tabular format is giving you access to more data at a glance, such as um, the time of the event and yep. the duration. And it's also giving you um, the name of the thread that was mm -hmm. responsible for generating the event. Okay, so some new features and, and also, most importantly, way easier to use because it's That's right. right there. What is completely brand new is the integration with the Diagnostics Tools mm -hmm. window and the representation of all this data into a timeline. Okay. So what you're seeing up here, this is something I didn't use in this particular scenario, but it's actually the same data, the same events being represented as a timeline. And what we're doing here is, and let me zoom out a little bit, is we're splitting, splitting up the events into three tracks. The first track gives you all the break events. Mm -hmm. So this is the debugger hitting a breakpoint, or you doing a step, or us clicking the break all button. Every time you do anything like that, you'll get a little event into this track. Then you have the output events track. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes to the output window, IntelliTrace collects and puts it on the timeline so you can see how they relate to other things that your application is doing. And finally, you have the IntelliTrace events track. Mm -hmm. That's where every other event that is collected goes. And the nice thing about the timeline is it gives you an eagle-eye view as to what your application is doing. And then if you spot something that is weird or unexpected or a cluster of events that you want to get more information about, you can simply use time selection which filters mm -hmm. the table accordingly. And you can also zoom to selection to get a, a more detailed view. And you can keep doing this as you get uh, closer and closer to the root cause of an issue. OK, cool. All right. Excellent. So with that, uh, I'm going to uh, ask Dan to come back and uh, show you guys how PerfTips works and how it actually integrates with this experience very right. well. Cool. Excellent. Right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Angelos for setting the stage there. So I'm going to switch to a different application that I'm going to use to demo some of the performance tooling features. This is one of my favorite features so far in the product. The, the perfect features? Show, yes. yes, I'm glad you like it. OK, so I'm going to start by setting up this application. It's called PhotoFilter. Mm -hmm. And it just downloads some pictures from the cloud and then loads some pictures from your disk. And when I press F5, I notice that it takes a long time for the application to start up and for the pictures to be displayed. And we'll see here, it probably takes about 10 or 12 seconds or so. Right. And this is one of those cases that, as a developer, I might just sort of live with it and say, hey, I'll go, I'll go later run <laughs> the profile. Your yeah. users aren't going to, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, and then I might say, oh, I need to go check that box and run the profiler later and figure out what's right. going on. Um, also, commonly, what a lot of people do in this situation is they just set a breakpoint and start stepping through the code right. and just trying to figure out what's going on. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to see what happens. <clears throat> so when I press F5 and I hit my first breakpoint, I set it in the load images function because mm -hmm. you know I have a hypothesis. It was, took a long time for the pictures to load. I'm going to right. go inspect the load images function. Sure. Right? It's pretty natural. Yep. So I step over that, and uh, I'm going to zoom into the editor a bit so you can see this. But you'll notice right away that um, this is what we call the debugger perf tips. Yeah. Right, so this is sort of the in-editor heads-up view of your uh, performance information right here. And this is telling me that the previous line took up to three milliseconds to run. Mm -hmm. Now we're running with the debugger, and there is some debug overhead. Sure. Right, so this is telling me that... But still, that's pretty, that's pretty quick. Yep, it says this previous line. Yep. It's not that interesting. Right, so we can use this to sort of strike out sections of code one at mm -hmm. a time 
And so instead of just guessing by looking at what the code does, now we've got some performance information that we can use to guide our investigation. All right, All right so I'm going to go back here to... Okay, so as I step through each line one at a time, I'll say, okay, that was quick, that was quick, get images from cloud, and we see it taking a long time, so mm -hmm. we know right away that this method was but interesting. But not as much, so that's almost three seconds, which is right? a little bit, probably, we, we might want to see if we can figure that out, but we just now know definitively that that's only part of the problem. Right, right. And we have a number, too, is yes. the big thing, right? We don't have to sort of mentally count in our heads right. or write these things down. And now when I step over loading images from disk, I can see that that is a further 3.7 seconds. Mm -hmm. There's a link query here that it takes um, a little while to run. Actually, surprisingly long to run in this case. Uh, that one took six seconds. Okay. Right? And then the remaining two, we'll right. see that they complete quickly. Now, the neat thing is that um, if you click on the perf tip, it will actually bring the diagnostic tools window up if it's not up already. Okay. And the reason for that, and this is something new that we introduced in CTP5, because perf tips have actually been okay. out for a while. Because when I showed this in preview, that didn't happen. Right. <laughs> you got a dialogue that gave you the ability to get the CPU time as well. Right. So okay. this, is, this has actually been our long-term vision with mm -hmm. it, that the perf tips actually bring the diagnostic tools up for you so you can sort Sweet. of yep. uh, get a closer look. And the main thing, and Angelos was just showing us the break event track. Mm -hmm. The break event track actually provides you that visual history of all those perf tip values. So if I hover here, I can oh. see that this is that this step here was 5.8 seconds. Okay. If you look at the tooltip, I was about to ask you if you just record things. Can, so can you just run the method without stepping through it and record how long each line takes? Uh, so uh, because we don't want to slow down debugging, we actually do it. Uh, whenever you interact with the debugger. So okay. it's sort of a guided performance measurement. Thing, okay. Right? okay. But we do record, um, and you could set some trace points and see their timing information. I'll get mm -hmm. to that in a okay. second. Um, but the main point is that you don't need to write it down. It's right here uh, in this visual history here. And you can also filter the table below to only show debugger events. Mm -hmm. So now I have the duration, now I have in a tabular format that history of the data oh, here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. So it is, it is user-guided yep. because you had to set those breakpoints in step, okay. right? And then you can activate historical debugging to see which lines each thing happened on if you want to go right. back and, and refer to it, but it does have the line number there. <clears throat> um, but in our case, um, this, this one right here corresponded to that uh, getting images from cloud method, okay. that first one we ran over. And, it, and when I select this, I can actually scroll down and see the CPU and memory characteristics of uh, of that action, right? Mm -hmm. So right here I can see that there was a bunch of CPU at the start of that step, and then it went sort of quiet for a little while. Right. Right? So this tells me that um, there's probably a bit of network I.O. involved. Yeah. It's not using the CPU. Maybe I can go ahead and parallelize some network calls or something like that. But let's go back in and step through the get images from cloud method okay. and take a look. So I'm going to show a few more features of perf tips while I do this. So if I run to that get images from cloud method there, I'll step in. And we'll see that this method is divided into primarily two main functions. And these are just sections of code that are in, you know, this is just what's written. The first section goes ahead and gets a list of images from the server. Mm -hmm. And then the second section of code downloads each image one at a time. So I can go and I can actually put a breakpoint here and see how long does it take to run that first section of code. Okay. I press F5, I run to that line. This is actually taking longer than it normally does. Might be an issue here. Uh, I actually happen to know that it usually doesn't take that long, so okay. another Another good thing to do with performance is to run things a few times to see if you get consistent results. Yep. So I'm just going to set the breakpoints at the start and end of that and try okay. it again. So I hit the first breakpoint, press F5, there we go. So we see that first section of code took 922 okay. milliseconds. Maybe it hit a, a bit of a network glitch, so not it took bad, longer that one bad. time. Yep. Right? And then I want to see 
uh, what happens when I do this last piece of code here. And if I right click and I run to cursor, I can see that ran in about 1.5 seconds. Okay. Actually, I made a mistake here. I've left the optimized version of the code in. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yes. And so oh. I'm, I'm going to show these is actually downloading the pictures, all three in parallel. Oh, OK. So what I can do is I can run this again and show you how long it takes when I remove that optimization. All right. Sound fair? Sure. All right. <clears throat> So I've got, um, I'm just going to comment out the, the parallel code here, and I'm going to make it run where I download one picture, pictures one at a time. Okay. Right. So instead of, it was actually creating a list of tasks and then downloading all in parallel. I see. And so what I'm showing you here is that I can, I can run experiments on my code very, very cheaply mm -hmm. and just say, is it faster when I do this or that? Yep. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and time the difference there. That was about 1.5 seconds yep. when I ran it last.